Well, joining me now are Jackie Flats from the St. Luke's Hospital, uh, Alison Shea from mental health charity Manca, and author Jason Pegler, who has written about mental illness. Let's start with you, Alison Shea. Um, Tailor-made facilities, friendly, accessible, able to provide round-the-clock care. It's, it's, it sounds like a great idea. Except that man what we believe at Mancap is that people shouldn't be shut away. That you know we've we've come a long way from from times when people had to be isolated from the community, and we feel that people with a learning disability that's that's who we support in Mancap are part of society, are part of our community, and they should be able to live within that community and not be ghettoised. Mm -hmm. So is is this? Regardless of, of, the, of, of their ability to, to, to cope, just, just as a blanket rule, um, you want people with, with severe learning uh, difficulties to be, tr to be helped at home rather than within any sort of institutional setting? Well, it's interesting that you use the term blanket rule because I think that's, that's what we don't want. We don't want to have blanket rules because mm -hmm. we're talking about individuals. So what we try to do is think about the individual first and what will be best for them what they want to do and what will be best for them. And if their carers can't cope? Um, well, that's where Mancap comes in and we are able to provide a lot of support and we can provide 24-hour support. We can provide two to one, three to one support, depending on what the individual needs. But we, we think that the smaller the group of people you're living with, the better it is, really. Right. OK, well, Jackie, Jackie Flats, as say, you're from St Luke's. Um, now, Obviously, you're, you're all for these these um, new asylums. I think that the, probably the, even just the word asylum um, is, is tends to have quite a pejorative um, feel to it. What benefits do you feel that these have um, rather than uh, helping people at home? I think St Luke's Hospital Group really would echo what Alison has said. We work very closely with MENCAP. Care in the community has actually provided very, very good care for a large number of people who now live in the community. However, at St Luke's Hospital Group, we know that there are some people who would be better cared for in modern 21st century asylums and hence the launch of our book this week which in actual fact we hope will open the debate for us to really start to consider what we've provided for in the past and what we can provide for in the future. The Royal College of Psy um, Psychiatrists for example quotes that for every 100,000 head of population there are 100 severely handicapped children of which 20% will need long stay um, secure care. And I think Charlotte Moore's piece that we've just seen demonstrates that quite carefully. She's a mum that, in actual fact, needs to think very carefully about where care will come for her two sons in the future. I suppose critics would say, well, yeah, you would say that because you're, you're sat there making money out of this. Um, in actual fact, St Luke's Hospital Group, there's always going to be people that perhaps think that. The NHS, in actual fact, purchases that come to us have to exhaust the NHS fully before they can place a person with us. Mm -hmm. So they've gone throughout the country sort of bed and come to us afterwards and what we do is we work with the NHS to provide care um, and centres of excellence throughout the southeast of England. Okay let's bring in Jason Pegler. Good afternoon to you Jason. Now you've written um, uh, about your own experiences. You've experienced manic depression since um, 17 in your, your book A Can of Madness. How would you describe your treatment? Good afternoon Phil. I must say that from the age of 17 until the age of 24 I found that my treatment within a hospital was very very difficult and it wasn't until I met uh, a psychiatrist that treated me as a human being that I was able to emotionally get over living with manic depression mm -hmm. so fundamentally the most important thing is to be treated as a human being first and that was what helped me to be impaired. So, so it, doesn't, it doesn't even come down to whether you're at home or whether you're in, in, in some sort of institution, it's, it's how you are treated within whichever organisation that is? Absolutely, I think that we're a problem really in society with, that mental health is a taboo and I believe that we're in a moment in history where we're at a transitional period, if you look back at women's rights in the 60s, gay and lesbian culture, and the way that when I was 11, gay and lesbian culture wasn't a part of the social norm. By the time I was 18 or 19, it had changed. And you see the same with the black community in England, with a time where we need change, and we really need change for people with mental health problems. So what's the, uh, if I can come back to, to you, Alison, where does the government stand on this? Because as, as we were saying in the, in the film, they closed down mm -hmm. um, all, all the, or mm -hmm. lots of the, the institutions. Mm -hmm. what, what is the present government thinking? The government introduced a fantastic piece of legislation a couple of years ago called Valuing People, 
um, and it talks about independence for people with a learning disability and choice and inclusion and great things. The problem that we're experiencing at the moment is that there isn't always the funding to back that up. Right. We would like to be able to see all people with a learning disability across the country getting the support that they need. So are they looking to provide a sort of mixed economy in, in this way, uh, care at, at home, within the community and within institutions? Um, I think so, yes. But, but the problem is for us that there doesn't seem to be enough money for them to purchase that care. Um, again, they want to start with the individual, so they want to, to, to start with the person with the learning disability or whatever, and decide what, what care they need. Right. But then it seems to fall down because there isn't enough money to go around for okay. everybody. Well, and also that learning disability doesn't seem to get um, the priority that, that other specialist areas get. Okay. All right, well, we'll leave it there. But I just say, uh, you all seem to agree that it starts with the individual and we work out uh, from there. Thank you for joining us. Time